Hello everyone, we are second year students from the ISL and our topic for the symposium is about inclusive education and legal background. I am Adrián Cañete. I am Aline Pereira and we hope you enjoy our presentation. In this video, we are focusing on the definition and the legal background of inclusive education. And in order to understand what inclusive education is a little better, it's important to analyze its beginning and its implementation into society by flipping some pages of history. According to literature, special education, which was the initial name for inclusive education, dates back to the 16th century in Spain, when a monk named Pedro Ponce de Leon was developing a systematic education for deaf learners. Especially one deaf individual who would become a clergyman and needed a language in order to confess and to take the holy vows. After Leon, many people in different places and times have contributed to develop the inclusive education we have nowadays. But what is inclusive education? Well, according to the Committee on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities, it is a process of continuous changes and modifications in different aspects of education in order to overcome every barrier that students with special needs may face when going to school. The main goal of it is to provide all students an equitable and participatory learning experience. It is important to emphasize that inclusive education involves everyone. Besides the students with physical disabilities, it also embraces students with emotional and behavior difficulties, students with mental health conditions, students with intellectual disabilities, and all the other kids and teenagers, since inclusive education benefits everyone, even people who do not have any special need. But why is it so important? Well, with an inclusive education, children can be part of their community and be better prepared for adult life. It also provides better opportunities for learning. With an inclusive education, individuals' strengths and gifts are better developed. It fosters a culture of respect and, and belonging by providing the opportunity to learn about and to accept individual differences. And last but not least, it provides all children the opportunities to develop friendships with one another. Some features and characteristics of inclusive education are the acceptance of all children in the regular classes, the support for students and for teachers. In inclusive education, the goals are developed according to each child's abilities and the classes are designed in a way to encourage and to help the students. Leadership from school principals and other administrators is fundamental and also the cooperation among students. As we said before, we are also mentioning the legal background of inclusive education in our presentation. And in order to introduce it, it's important to say that the very first special education program was a delinquency prevention program for at-risk children who lived in the urban slums of the United States. After the 40s, many other programs for children with specific learning disabilities became common. And up to nowadays that we have the inclusive education was in no in the schools and in other education institutions. Taking into account what Alina said, I believe it is important for us educators to know more and to be aware of the current status of inclusive education in our country. Legal background in Paraguay. There is a law in Paraguay with a number of 5,136 that deals with inclusive education. It has several chapters and articles as well as all of them dealing about the different rights of students with special needs and disabilities. It begins with chapter two about the principles and guarantees. Article four, public and private educational services should provide students the following basic educational principles. No discrimination, respect for difference and recognition of disability as a component of human diversity equality of opportunity, active and effective participation of all actors in the educational field. It means that not only teachers, but also classmates, principals, and parents should be involved in the learning process of students with special needs, and access to all levels and modalities of education. Then, chapter three about the responsible body, which is the Ministry of Education and Culture. As a governing body of education, the ministry should prevent, 
eradicate and punish any type of discriminatory attitude against students with special needs. Then chapter four of the technical team, the people that will work on inclusive education so as to provide proper guidelines that should be followed. Article eight, the technical teams shall be made up of a psychologist, a pedagogue, a speech therapist, a social worker, and a disability specialist. All of them will work on a proper system that can be implemented by the teachers in the educational system. Article nine, teachers in collaboration with the technical teams, they will be the responsible ones for the development and implementation of the guidelines so as to provide students a better learning process. Overall, the Law 5136 is a very important step for the implementation of inclusive education, but there is still a lot of work to do in terms of its application, since most teachers don't know about it. The full text of the law is available on the website of the Ministry of Education, and it is a duty for all educators to be aware of it, apply its principles in the classrooms, as well as to make those rules to be accomplished by the whole society. We hope you've enjoyed our presentation. It was just a brief explanation of what inclusive education involves, especially in our country. And we should remember that education is a worldwide right. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.